When most rail fans think of Germany, they probably picture one of the numerous intercity express trains that provide excellent rail connections throughout the country. Those that love steam may envision one of the famous 210 class 52 Kriegsloks built in the thousands during World War II. Transit fans might even remember the unique Wuppertal hanging monorail. Very few would think of Germany as a hotbed of narrow-gauge steam. Yet, in the former communist East Germany, abundant coal reserves and lack of capital helped many steam lines of all sizes to survive until they could be saved by enlightened citizens after reunification in 1990. I joined a group of Brits in April 2019 for a two-week trip to the German state of Saxony to visit the Dresden Steam Festival and nine 750 and 600 millimeter gauge railways. In this program, we'll visit six of them. For reference, 750 millimeters is about 29 and a half inches and 600 millimeters about 23 and 5 eighths inches. You will see three railways with regularly scheduled service and three heritage lines. Our visit coincided with the Easter holiday, and the trains were numerous and well patronized. Our first line is the Dölnetzbahn, located between Leipzig and Dresden. This 12 and a half mile long, 750 millimeter gauge line provides regularly scheduled diesel train service to the locals, but our charter train will be pulled by one of the 96 Saxon 4K Gunther Meyer type articulated steam locomotives built between 1892 and 1921 for the Royal Saxon State Railways. They were constructed by Richard Hartmann in Chemnitz and the successor company, the Sachsische Maschinenfabrik Vormals Richard Hartmann. Since that is such a mouthful, I'll refer to them all as being built by Hartmann. These locals are most commonly known as Saxon Myers. Twenty-two of them have been preserved, and we'll see more of them later.
we stopped at the Mugen shops for lunch and a chance to see 99-1584-4 up close. You'll note that almost all locomotives will have a class number of 99, no matter what the wheel arrangement or size. This seems to apply to all narrow gauge locos in most of Europe. Built by Hartmann in 1912 as 99584, it was later renumbered to 991584, and a mathematical check digit of 4 was added even later. The Saxon Myers have up about 30 inch drivers and a rated top speed of 30 kilometers or about 19 miles an hour. You may have noted that these locomotives are very quiet. This is due in large part to the fact that they are compound locomotives with both high and low pressure cylinders using the steam twice before exhausting up the stack. the small cars of the Feldbahn Glossen on the trestle above the standard gauge gondola riding on a narrow gauge car carrier. This type of coupler is pretty much standard in Germany on 750 millimeter lines. Almost all steam engines I saw in Germany have this fascinating steam powered bell. one of the regularly scheduled trains. Back at Milgen for some servicing and the first of numerous standpipe watering facilities you'll see in the program.
another shot of a standard gauge car on one of the car carriers. I found this wooden truss rod box car intriguing. And back at Oshots, waiting for our train to Dresden. After a couple of days at the steam festival, we journeyed east and south by rail to Zittau and the 10 mile long, 750 millimeter gauge Zittauer Schmalspurbahn. This railway uses locos with what is probably the most standard loco type on the narrow gauge lines in Germany, the 210-2 tank engine. The two locos in steam this day were 99731, built by Hartmann in 1928, and 1929 built 99-1749-3, constructed by the Berliner Maschinenbau AG, also known as BMAG. Both locos have 31 and a half inch drivers and are rated at 30 kilometers per hour, about 19 miles per hour. shaped line splits at the junction station of Berzdorf. When two trains are operating, one is treated to a dual departure every two hours.
our lunch stop was at Kurut Oiben, only about a mile from the Czech Republic border.
back at Sitao main train station and time to put the train to bed for the night. Next, we journey east and north to Weisswasser, near the Polish border, to visit the 12-mile-long, 600-millimeter Waldeisenbahn Muskau. First tracks were laid in 1895 and served lignite coal mines, brickworks, sawmills, paper factories, and glassworks over the years. At one time, the railway boasted about 30 miles of tracks but gradually shrunk in size until the last 7.25 miles was abandoned when the brickworks it served closed. Enthusiasts began to reopen the railway in stages in the 1980s. Our charter train's locomotive is an 080 tender engine built by Ornstein and Koppel in 1934 for the Mecklenburg Pomerania Schmalspurbahn. It has had numerous homes over the years and even spent some time in Wales before returning to Germany in 1978. She has 25 and a half inch drivers and a top speed of about 15 and a half miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour. The cars feature a type of Lincoln pin coupler, and our four-car train required two actual brakemen as the cars only have hand brakes on them. Wonderful to watch them apply and release the brakes in response to the whistle signals from the driver. First stop was at Kromlau, where the loco ran around the train. of the Kromlau branch, we wanted to head west, but there is no passing siding there, so the railroad sent this diesel hydraulic to switch the train so that we could continue on to the Tungban, or Clay Railway. to flag a couple of crossings as the section of line we were using sees few trains a year. 
I check the 2022 schedule and only 11 days are listed with trains to the end station. The final few runbys took place on a new two mile section of track finished in 2017.
the original alignment had to be dismantled to make room for the expansion of a huge lignite open pit mine that provides fuel for this power plant. After a week in the Dresden area, we headed southwest to the small city of Annaberg Buchholz, our base for more rail visits. The first of these was the 10.85 mile long 750 mm gauge Fichtelbergbahn. This railway provides regularly scheduled steam service all year long to the ski resort town of Oberwiesenthal. A climb of 780 feet from the Kranzal station, where the line connects with the standard gauge passenger service, to Chemnitz. holiday seasons, the trains were so long that sometimes double heading was required. Trains from each end of the line meet at Niederschlag station on a regular basis.
lows in the steam the day we visited were 99 1741-0 Hartman of 1928 plus 99-1772-5 and 99-1794-9 both built by locomotive bow Karl Marx in 1953 and 1956 respectively. They all have the standard 31 and a half inch drivers and top speed of 19 miles an hour. thing I really like about visiting railways in Germany is that the populace loves to hike. So it's relatively easy to do line side shots as one walks along the paths paralleling the railway lines. In fact, all of the videos in this program were taken without the use of a road vehicle, just my feet and the trains themselves.
railway is the Museumbahn Schönheide. This is the last remaining portion of the first, longest, and steepest 750 mm line in Saxony. The museum rebuilt a 2.49 mile section of the line in the 1990s and gives rides several times a year. Our loco for today is 99516, another Saxon Meyer built by Hartmann in 1892 which makes it the oldest operating locomotive of its type in the world. We had a wonderful time sampling food from the vendors and a lovely Pilsner beer from Wernersgrunde in the open car as we rode the line.
Last, but certainly not least, is the 4.94 mile long Presnitzelbahn, another 750 millimeter heritage line that operates on most weekends in the summer and fall, plus during holidays, vacations like Easter. Two trains were running multiple trips a day. They would exchange engines at the Jongstadt station after each trip, which required three locos in steam. The only O10 O we saw during the entire tour was 991715 4, built by Hartman in 1927, with the usual 31 and a half inch drivers and 19 mile per hour top speed. There were also two Saxon Myers in steam. 991542 of 1899 and 991590-1 of 1913, as usual, built by Hartman. always meet at the small town of Schmalzgrub.
As with the other railways in the area, there were excellent walking trails that provided me with exercise and some great vantage points for video.
Should you ever get to Germany and want to ride these and other lines in Saxony, I can hardly recommend visiting the website of Dampfbahn Route Sachen, a great resource in English for the steam deprived among us. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed exploring some of the over 30 narrow gauge railways that once ran in Saxony with me.